Hello everyone, my name is Shushrut. Welcome to ALB, the place to trade. Uh, before I start my daily rundown for Friday, the 20th of September 2019, I'm sorry. Uh, please go through the risk probabilities uh, because trading in financial assets has got inherent risk attached to it. So please uh, take a moment and read out uh, our uh, risk probability article. Uh, so that uh, you know all the necessities that needs to be done before you take a trade or invest in any uh, of the instruments uh, So the major news uh, that will be a Headlining today and that was also yesterday is that Chinese and US uh, officials are meeting and they met yesterday and the, They are the meeting still continues today uh, U.S. and Chinese deputy trade negotiators resume fa face off uh, face to face face to face talks for the first time in nearly two months on Thursday as the world's two largest economies try to bridge uh, deep policy differences and find a way out of their protracted trade war. Uh, the negotiations, which will extend into Friday, are aimed at laying the groundwork for high-level talks in early October that will determine whether the two countries are working toward a solution or headed for a new or higher tariffs on each other's goods. A delegation of about 30 Chinese officials led by, uh, led by Vice Finance Minister from China Liao Min met counterparts at the U.S. Trade Re Representative's office near the White House. Uh, Deputy Jeffrey Gerrish led the U.S. delegation. Uh, the discussion are seen focusing heavily on agriculture, including U.S. demands that China substantially increase purchase of American soybeans and other farm commodities. A person with knowledge of the plan discuss has reported to the news ag agencies. Uh, the two negotiating sessions uh, over the two days will cover agriculture issues, while just one will be devoted to the strengthening of China's intellectual property protections and forced transfers of U.S. tech to Chinese firms. Uh, so the market would be really looking uh, on what are the outcomes that will be coming up on uh, on today's meeting. Um, so I'll just put the chart. So as you can see, the S&P 500 has been flat yesterday. You can say not much of a, not much of a movement as you can see. So this is because maybe they are waiting for what are the next steps that will, the two governments will be taking. Uh, the, the sorry, the representative will be, and how uh, the meeting will be going with them because in October they have uh, the high level meeting between uh, President Xi and uh, Donald Trump. So before that, this kind would give them an indicator like in what in which direction. Uh, um, their relation in the future uh, both in trade and and in between the country how, how it will f uh, flare up in, in in the coming months so so i think that's the reason why we didn't mostly see much kind of movement yesterday uh, it was pretty sideways between a range bound and i hope to see it uh, same till till the u.s uh, session opens and uh, and maybe most probably when there is a clear press conference done from from uh, the deputy of uh, of the US delegation and the Chinese delegation and how uh, what they say actually would depend quite a lot on how from here where it moves uh, moving on to the uh, UK sector uh, where we saw this uh, person Mr. Stephen uh, Barclay, he's Britain's uh, Brexit minister, on Thursday urged the European Union to show flexibility and creativity in striking a deal. Although he stuck to his country's position that the uh, the continuous Irish backdrops, uh, Irish back backdrop, uh, backstop arrangement must go. So I'm sorry for this. Uh, so he actually. Uh, so yesterday there was a quite a good news for the pound, to be honest, because uh, EU Juncker came and told the press that he have been really uh, kind of satisfied with the meeting he had and he is optimistic about uh, that the EU and UK might have uh, uh, a deal before the 31st of, of uh, October uh, when Britain is uh, scheduled to leave the European Union. So 
we saw the pound strengthening yesterday uh, and it was almost at the its two month high so if nothing major uh, bad news comes out from the uk uh, in the calendar there is no not much of a uk data so if there is no not much uh, <coughs> negative news uh, from uh, regarding brexit comes out from the uk i don't see pound uh, to be really a uh, weak over th over the trading session for today so a big mark here 12573 if if uh, something uh, if if this tone of optimism really continues uh, from from both the US and EU sorry sorry the UK and the EU I think uh, it will be uh, quite a, a good trading session for pound as uh, Britain wants a deal to guide its relationship with the biggest trading partner after it leaves the block uh, but would leave without one if both sides cannot agree in the next 42 days uh, which was ushered by uh, the Britain's uh, Brexit secretary Mr. Stephen Barclay uh, Stephen Barclay is also meeting uh, uh, he's also kind of, he's scheduled to meet Ms. Spain's acting foreign minister and newly appointed European foreign policy chief uh, Joseph Borrell as well as members of the British community in Spain uh, business ties between the two countries uh, would also be complicated by a messy departure Barclay said international groups like British Airways and Iberia Airlines uh, operator IAG did not want uncertainty of this uh, uh, um, this Brexit Brexit issue. Uh, Brit Britain is ready to continue discussion about the territory of Gibraltar on Spain's uh, southern coast, uh, which some 10,000 Spaniards enter every day. Barclay said, adding conversation on the matter so far had been constructive and pragmatic. The Conservative government would abide by a ruling from Britain's top judicial body, the Supreme Court, on Johnson's, Johnson's decision to suspend Parliament for five weeks. He he added as well. So uh, yeah, so both from EU and UK, both quite optimistic news uh, are coming out uh, regarding the Brexit deal. So it kind of uh, it feels like this calm after all the things that we saw at the end at the, at the starting of the week. Uh, with uh, with uh, uh, with the oil prices and uh, all the uh, uncertainties, like one by one, it kind of looking to get get getting solved at the moment. Uh, that's why you see such a good. Uh, even the euro did uh, ap uh, appreciate uh, yesterday. Uh, it was it was on on its uh, uh, back from his lows and trading at the moment at one ten fifty seven. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of going in a very uh, positive note at the moment. All the discussions. So hopefully they will be finding a deal uh, before the thirty first, and uh, the market won't be that much uh, jittery with all that it has been going for the past months. Uh, moving on. So yesterday. So yesterday after uh, the ECB. Uh, st uh, ECB stimulus wo uh, weapon has had a weak start. Uh, we saw uh, yesterday uh, demand was unexpectedly low on Thursday for new round of ultra cheap European Central Bank funding. A disappointment for a bank that portrayed the facility as a powerful tool to keep credit flowing to the economy. Banks took just took up to 3.4 billion euros worth of loans in longer terms refinancing operation. Uh, signaling a drop in excess liquidity since they had already agreed to repay 31.8 billion euros worth of funds early from a similar facility. The ECB last week improved the terms of facility, extending the maturity to three years from two and benchmarking it uh, to the bank's minus spot 5% deposit rate, uh, essentially giving banks a rebate if they meet their lending targets. Uh, but others noted that some technical factors limited uh, that take up banks had little time to digest the new terms uh, that were announced uh, last Thursday as they were waiting for ECB to introduce a tired deposit trade on October 31st, which gives banks an opportunity for uh, for an arbitrage. Sorry, arbitrage. 
uh, with banks borrowing at minus 45 percent and depositing uh, this cash at zero percent the facility provides arbitrage opp opportunity suggesting that take up will be significantly higher in the ecb's december auction uh, still the arbitrage will do little to boost the lending to the real economy indicating that actual demand for the facility is lukewarm uh, given lenders relatively easy access to cheap funding so after uh, ecb's meeting last thursday there wasn't much appetite for the banks to really uh, take up uh, additional loans from from central bank which thought that uh, they have a powerful tool uh, to keep the uh, credit flowing in the economy uh, but they are still kind of uh, at the moment hoping the uh, ecb will ecb sorry the ecb will be putting uh, some more uh, kind of uh, how do i say quote unquote some favors for them so that they can uh, they can uh, get uh, a better better deal in, in after uh, the next meeting which is scheduled on the 30 30th of october uh, so 30th yes the 30th of october uh, which is just the day before uh, the brexit so quite two days uh, of exciting uh, things will be coming up at the end of next month <clears throat> finally uh, the oil prices uh, it we saw big weekly gain in months uh, as uh, there has been the middle east tension which uh, just went out of proportion last uh, weekend oil prices were on track for the uh, for uh, more than um, uh, minus seven percent sorry more than seven percent jump this week the biggest in months as early trading on friday saw gains extend on fresh attention in the middle east after a key saudi arabian supply hub was knocked out in an attack last weekend uh, friday's uh, rise came after a saudi-led coalition launched a military operation north of yemen's port uh, the city called Hud hudida if i'm i'm sorry if i'm not pronouncing it right as U.S. Uh, worked with Middle East and European nations to build a coalition to deter Iran, Iranian threats after the Saudi attack, uh, Brent crude uh, is on track uh, to rise about 7.7 percent this week, the biggest weekly gain since January. Uh, the WTI was at trading at 64 spot 96 uh, dollar barrel, up 56 cents uh, at the early Asian share uh, Asian session. Uh, Saudi's uh, production has dropped almost by half after an attack on Saturday crippled a major oil processing facility. Its oil minister has pledged to restore lost production by the end of this month and bring capacity back to 12 million barrels per day by the end of November. So, uh, this uh, so after last weekend that uh, the Saudi Arabian uh, oil facility were attacked. Uh, on the market open we did see quite a huge uh, jump in prices for oil uh, but then when the comments such as they said that it will be all right within the next two days and uh, us also um, pu pu putting uh, out their oil uh, the, that if if saudi if saudi is needed uh, to kind of uh, if kind of get back uh, the oil production on track so all these kind of things did make the oil prices uh, stable uh, for the week but as the week ends there have been quite a harsh tone on both uh, the from the US and uh, Iran uh, as Iranian uh, oil minister and uh, uh, and the other uh, mini Iranian foreign minister both of them has uh, uttered the same same uh, statement saying that if if uh, if us are going to put iran under more sanctions or or uh, try to try to put any kind of uh, uh, try to get into any kind of war with iran they will be uh, replying it uh, with uh, with force and also the fact that Ir iranians have denied that they had any any kind of hand in in uh, all the things that have happened in in Saudi Arabia so all these kind of statements from uh, both US and Iran 
is again making uh, making the oil prices uh, oil prices uh, kind of going back up so here it was that open on on my on the sunday early hours uh, in, in in europe with over 20 percent then it kind of throughout the whole week you can see like after a monday and the tuesday session is kind of kind of stabilizing and it was kind of almost reached uh, this area around 57 50 mark uh, but this kind of uh, tone from from both the governments are again making uh, the oil prices go up again so it could be very uh, very tricky to really uh, price at the moment like which direction the oil might go uh, we have to wait actually until the oil data comes out on Tuesday and Wednesday from the US uh, to see any kind of really uh, uh, to get a direction uh, of the oil prices but at the moment the oil looks quite bullish uh, coming uh, after the news from uh, Tehran and, and Washington and so uh, I won't be really uh, in in a in a mo place to really short the oil at the moment though it looks though it has been so if you see the input the weekly chart so so this is a weekly chart as you can see uh, though the oil opened uh, so high it really cut back almost more than half of the gains that it had done uh, on that thing on the so because there has been kind of quite a lot of positive news that have been coming up regarding the oil production but um, it might be if, if this kind of rhetoric comes out from both the governments um, I, you can easily see the price surge um by by the end of uh, this week session but at the moment uh, it's quite tricky to trade on the oil so i would be really keeping my hands off out of it uh, to kind of any so that i don't get on the wrong side until and unless you get a uh, prominent uh, direction i don't think it would be a great idea to uh, take a trade on the oil at the moment okay so today there's not much news coming up uh, major news uh, there is sorry there is a, a fed william speech at uh, quarter past two in the afternoon and uh, there is also fed uh, rosen green speaking at half past 20 uh, 20 past five so one is just in between uh, the uh, middle of the uh, European session and uh, one are before the US market opens and the one is after the European close uh, not really market moving uh, uh, news uh, there is this uh, from the European Union uh, there is a con consumer confidence confidence flash at 4 in the afternoon uh, it is expected as minus 7 spot 8 uh, previous was minus 7 spot 1 so could be uh, could be quite uh, I don't think it would be much of a hindrance for euro dollar as such but uh, I would keep an eye uh, on it to to get a proper pro perspective and anyways it would be the end of uh, the week so you uh, you will see less kind of uh, volume uh, at that time of the day because most of the European guys would be leaving their desks so yeah, apart from this, there is no not ma major news uh, on uh, for today. Uh, I hope uh, yeah that is it for uh, for from me for today. I hope you have a lovely trading day ahead. Uh, all the best, and if you have anything, uh, any query, you can can write down on the comment section or get into get in touch with us uh, on our uh, website or. You can email us as well. You will find all the information on our website at www.lb.com. I hope you have a good, very good weekend and the rest of the great trading session. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.